How's it going guys? It's Poetry Sud, uh, and welcome to a little bit of a different video than what I normally do. This is going to be sort of a after action report or like um, recap video. I don't know what it's really called, but um, essentially I've been playing a lot of Vicky 2 the past few days. Um, I haven't had a whole bunch of time to record, I just haven't had the energy really. Uh, so I've been playing a lot of this in my own time though. Um, instead of recording when I should be. Um, that's besides the point. Um, but anyways, and I have noticed, or well, I finished a game for the first time in Vicky 2 is one thing. And then I was like, you know, I just finished a game for the first time. Um, and a lot of interesting stuff happened. So it might be fun to do a little video talking about what happened over the course of this game. And so it's not going to be anything too complex, not a full playthrough. This is going to be a one-off where we're going to talk about what's going on in this save that I have here. Um, I played as Argentina, and yeah, I'm just gonna hop right in. I don't really have a name for this or anything. It's just gonna be, you know, Vicky2 Argentina After Action Report. We are using HPM, so be aware of that. Uh, I've been playing with HPM a while now, and I've really enjoyed it, so that's pretty much uh, been the norm. Um, I turned the game volume on. Not sure why it hasn't come on. Oh, no, it's there. It's just very quiet. Um, okay. Yeah, so anyways, I've been playing... There we go, get some nice music. I've been playing with HPM, and I played as Argentina, because I wanted to really go for, like, a colonial game... Or not colonial, but, like, a, a New World colonized colonial nation immigration game. I really wanted to go for the immigration aspect um, and just try to get as many immigrants as I could. I want to try to, like... Basically, I was like, I want to start with a little bit of population, which Argentina starts with, <clears throat> and just get a ton by the end. And I, I think I did that pretty successfully. So the year is 1935. It's about to be the end of the game. Uh, and I finished it already. I just saved before the end so I could show it off and whatnot. But yeah, it's been a really interesting game. So let's start from the beginning. Right at the beginning of the game, I... Um, <clears throat> Well, if you don't know, with HPM, you actually don't start with everything colonized. You start with a little bit of land here and up into here. Uh, but you don't start with everything. You also start with Entre Rios and um, and also like another little person, I think Corrientes. Yeah, you start with Corrientes um, as puppet states. And I annexed them pretty early on. There's some like weird events that happen where you have like a civil war and stuff. Uh, that wasn't too hard. I basically mopped that, that up in the first 20, 30 years or so. Um... And, uh, and, uh, with, uh, beyond that, I also conquered Uruguay right off the bat, um, actually, um, I figured it'd be a good idea. Unfortunately, though, Brazil actually conquered that for me pretty early on, because Brazil is fairly strong early on, um, and they have been pretty strong this whole game. But they, uh, yeah, they conquered Uruguay from me, which is why you'll see a lot of it is Platinean, which is the main culture. Um, but then a lot of it is Brazilian. It's about half and half. We're going to talk about the other nationalities of our nation in a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, moving on. And, and by the way, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I hope you guys are going to enjoy this um, sort of like a little tale. I know it's a little bit different than other after action reports necessarily. It's a little more laid back and casual and more just like a storytelling time. But hopefully you guys will enjoy that. I know a lot of people like Vicky too, so maybe I'll do more of these once since I'm playing more on my own time. Uh, so yeah, so around that time, oh, looks like the game might have hiccuped for a sec. It does that with HPM. So anyway, so we uh, consolidated our <clears throat> consolidated our land and took over Uruguay, lost it to the Brazilians. Um, and after that point, I just kind of didn't have a whole bunch to do. Um, I did realize that I needed to actually get my my uh, I needed to get my party uh, or my um, political reforms into the voting territory especially to be more towards universal so i started doing that i started passing their forms as much as i could for a long time i actually was supporting like um liberal and stuff just to uh, with my focuses just to get more and more of that sort of um of the uh of the reforms done and so i started to get a lot of immigration i was getting like maybe let's unpause for just a day or two so you can see how much i'm getting now it's not calculating. Yeah, look at that. All right, so it's starting to come up, but uh, it's it's not. Yeah, there we go. So like by the end of the game, I was getting like twelve thousand per month, like absolutely insane, or per day rather, absolutely insane amounts of immigrant um, immigrants per day. So that's crazy. Um, but I started getting off like I started off with just like you know a couple hundred at a time and whatnot. Uh, but as I got like the reforms going down throughout the game, then it started just skyrocketing. Um, 
Chile and Brazil were my main competitors for immigrants, and basically just like whoever was at war would be getting less, but uh, but um, that's about it. Everyone else was kind of getting the same uh, with marginal differences. Brazil was beating me for a long time, but I passed them eventually. Um, Chile has just sort of existed. They haven't done anything crazy. I did take one state from them here, and I also took this state over here, Antofagasta. Um, I took that from them after they took some from Bolivia. So. Uh, yeah, Bolivia starts in HPM as a dictator over them and Peru or something like that. Um, I took a bunch of land, or a little bit of land, not a bunch. I took Atacama and uh, and then our cores back from them, but nothing else really. They took over Paraguay at the end. It was like in the last 10 years of the game. For most of the game, Paraguay just sort of existed independently. I never felt like conquering them or anything like that. Um, Peru in the last... 20 years of the game um, expanded from just Cusco uh, and also I took this province Arequipa from them uh, that was the only one I took from them and that's about as far as up, up as I got but I just I liked the, uh, the sulfur and stuff so I decided to take that um, but they in the last 20 or 30 years of the game they just went buck wild they took a bunch of Brazil just mostly the Amazons which is not great but you know still um, they, they took over that they also went a little they didn't take over any of Ecuador but uh, but they've been like beating up on them. <laughs> uh, Colombia has not done too much. It looks like they took, uh, no, they haven't taken any cores. Venezuela didn't do anything. I haven't paid too much attention to the northern half of South America, but uh, in the southern half, I did take a little bit of Chile's land there. Uh, I tried to take more at one point, but I think the British intervened, so I was not able to. And I took a little bit up here. So I did take a little bit of land, but after that, it was mostly just focusing on getting the immigration up there so I could just be a huge power. Uh, and at the end of the game, I did take Uruguay back. I reclaimed Uruguay from the Brazilians. Uh, and I also took over Rio Grande do Sul um, with the land here. Uh, mostly just I decided to continue the Reconquista, essentially. Um, I, I just wanted more land, you know, get, get some good resources, especially the tobacco. Uh, and then I also took Santa Catarina in a different war um, and stuff. So I, I decided this river right here would be sort of like where we draw the boundary. If I had had more time, I probably would have taken more. But anyways, uh, not a huge deal. Maybe gone up to Sao Paulo. I'm not sure. Um, Pernambuco does exist. They got released in some war at some point in time. But um, anywho, so that's my country. I just sort of had stuff going on. Um, Industry-wise, we are liberal, so we just have a ton of unemployment, unfortunately. Um, but we're still doing all right, economic-wise. Um, I, but we have a ton of factories, obviously, especially for something like for a country like Argentina that starts with starts with limited population. You know, um, so that's pretty darn good. We had a lot, a lot of factories. Um, we actually let's talk about politics and stuff because that is related to that. Um, throughout most of the game, we started with conservatives, obviously, um, but then within like the first 10 years of the game or the first 20 years, I think we got the liberals in power like one election cycle, um, and we actually start with a dictatorship, but I got voting right away, so that got rid of that. And fairly soon after socialism became a thing, I actually started boosting it because I liked socialism. They had all the reforms I needed to get the one, um, what is it? Uh, there's a modifier you get that gives you a ton of immigration um, immigration attraction. There's a decision that does it. Um, and I got that pretty early on uh, by switching to socialists. And actually, we were socialists for like 40 years of the game in the middle of it. Which is why you can see there's a ton of popular vote voting for socialism. Uh, it's just in the last little bit of the game that the liberals allied with some other parties... Um, yeah, like these other weird sort of like variation parties, the Union Civica and Union Civica Radical. Um, those parties actually sort of uh, uh, helped them and boosted them up a little bit. So they did sort of regain the vote at the end, which has been annoying. I actually wanted to stay socialist. But anyway, so that's basically our country. We're socialist for a good period of time and whatnot. Um, and that's what really allowed me to build a whole bunch of factories and whatnot. Our industry is pretty high up there. Military is not super huge, but uh, it's doing all right right now. Um, it's definitely gotten stronger the past like 30 years of the game. Our, you can see our top exports and imports right there. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Um, let's go talk about the rest of the world though, because this is where this game really got interesting. So again, Brazil has a middling game. They lost some land and stuff. 
Let's go look at Africa. Yeah, Africa is, uh, is interesting. <laughs> let's just say that. You know what, before we go and look at Africa, let's look at Europe. Let's look at Europe. Um, America, nothing too out of the ordinary. A little bit of Washington State uh, is owned by Canada. I don't know why, just don't ask. Um, Mexico, historical borders, identically, I think. Um, and um, yeah, let's go look at Europe. So Europe is a freaking mess. <laughs> So we're gonna go over this. Um, essentially, Europe started off pretty normal. You had Italy form. I think they actually, in HPM, they can form. What the fudge? Holy crap, how do you have so much of a military? Wow, okay, you're mobilized, that's why. Um, Spain, so let's let's just start west to east, right? Yeah, don't, don't ask about this, we'll get there. Um, I don't even know how I wanna start with this. So uh, Italy, let's start with Italy. So Italy formed um, the normal way, except I think they, they did the Garibaldi's red shirts, which in HPM is a little different. Basically all of Northern Italy unifies and then you have to conquer the South, but it's normally pretty easy. Uh, so that happened. Uh, they conquered all, they unified it. Italy hasn't been too out of the ordinary. So yeah, Italy, that's Italy done. Austria, Hungary has basically just sat the same the entire game. So that's pretty easy. They've been a constitutional monarchy and they've actually not really lost anything. Uh, so that's kind of cool. They actually stayed and stayed a strong constitutional monarchy the whole game. Germany formed and has been pretty strong the whole game as well. Um, and they are actually a liberal party, and they've been liberal the whole game. France has not done too much out of the ordinary. They've also been social. They've been a mixture of like liberals, socialists, conservatives. So they've just kind of been like average and middling, you know, a mix of stuff that you would like basically expect. Now, let's get into the weird stuff. So because of the fact that those ones all sort of stayed normal, they didn't really have much trouble existing. Uh, Spain was Carlos. They had the Carlos enforced demands at some point in time and just had kind of sat there. They've been in the sphere of France a long time. Um, then you get to the interesting cases. So you have the United Kingdom, right? And you have Russia. So Russia starts with a monarchy early on they actually got pushed out by communists. They had a full-on Bolshevik revolution, and the Bolsheviks enforced their demands, and they actually became a, uh, they became the Soviet Union. And I looked, this was like in 1882. It wasn't even that late. I look over, um, and I was like, what the fudge? And you know, I think it was actually in the 1890s in the First Great War, which uh, the First Great War was between Germany, Austria, Hungary, and France, and I think Italy wasn't involved. It was like these three versus Russia and the UK, and then some other miners, obviously. Um, the UK in the 1890s, around that same time, well, so I think the Soviet Union came to exist before the first Great War in the, of the 1890s. We'll just call it 1900. It was like the turn of the century Great War, um, World War One, essentially. I think Russia flipped to communists before then, um, and around the same time, the UK actually flipped to fascist, and they still have a fascist dictatorship. Um, Russia also has a fascist dictatorship. Uh, Italy, more recently, became a fascist republic, so I'm not sure how that works, but um, they were, the, it's just the fascist party is in charge, but the fascists were in charge for a, uh, a while in Italy. They were, most of the time, they've been like liberal or conservative, though, but the fascists have taken over now. Um, Russia became fascist, actually. They went from being a communist dictatorship, a proletariat dictatorship. Um, they had a huge fascist rebellion in the late 1890s or so, and then they got the fascists in charge. So basically what you had happen is uh, the Russians and the British, uh, both fascists, went to war with the Germans and the French and the Austro-Hungarians, Austro as well as, I believe, the U.S. Um, the U.S. has just been a, you know, a liberal party the whole time, conservatives and then liberals. Um, the U.S. has just sort of been supporting the liberal alliances of Europe, I would say. You have Germany and France and Austria-Hungary, although Austria-Hungary hasn't been as involved, and Italy hasn't been as involved. Uh, but you have Germany and France especially have just been beating up um, the fascist powers. So you had World War One was basically about, it was like an ideological war, which uh, World War One in real life wasn't necessarily. More of World War Two was. Um, but um, in World War One, you had the, the Germans and the French be, and the Austria-Hungarians Austro helping against 
Russia and stuff. Um, also, Turkey came to exist. I think they just kind of reformed their way into no longer being the Ottoman Empire or something. Greece got back most of their cores, all their cores, pretty much. Yugoslavia exists. All this is pretty self-explanatory. You just had them pop out of people like the Ottomans and pop out out of uh, different people. Um, I don't know. Nothing too complex there. Um, but with the <clears throat> with the uh, with the World War One situation, that was right around like 1900. Um, what actually happened is around this time, I actually went to war with Brazil. I think that's where I got back Uruguay. Uh, my first war out of three against the Brazilians. Um, and I went to war with the British, or not them, with, with the Brazilians, and they were actually protected by the British. So the British intervened or like were protecting them, I don't remember what it was. And so I was a little worried until I realized that World War I was going on. So what happened is they won, the Allies won World War I, and they actually called for the dismemberment, the, basically they called for the dissolution of Russia and of their empire, because that's a CB you get in late game for the Great Wars. It's like, dissolve this person's empire, you know, get rid of their empire, make them release all their holdings. So they enforced that against Russia and the British, and that was pretty intense. Because essentially what happened is, um, let's, we'll go over each one. Russia's a little easier. Um, so with Russia, you have Ukraine, Poland, Belarus, and Lithuania all got released. I think Lithuania had actually come to exist with uh like memel at some point from the germans but then the germans reconquered it um and stuff but now they exist again actually it looks like they're getting eaten is that true oh no this is the third great war i forgot about that let's go over that let's wait on that um so anyways <clears throat> so you have the um you have the russians they get belarus popped out of them and ukraine uh tatarstan came from like rebels a little later i think they heard they are a proletariat dictatorship huh yeah, Kalmyria, Circassia, Chechnya, Dagestan, Transcaucasia. So you have all the Caucasus powers. You have Turkmenistan, I believe, was pushed out of them. Uzbekistan, those might already exist. I know Kazakhstan uh, was popped out of the uh, popped out of Russia. So was Tanatuva, Beryatia, and Kamchatka uh, and stuff. Um, so Russia was dissolved in that manner. They're still obviously a great power. Oh, actually, they're, they're a secondary power. Wow, that surprises me. A little bit so uh, but they've still been powerful right but they did lose a lot uh, let's go look at Asia real quick um, China hasn't really been nothing out of the ordinary just you know the Qing Empire Japan conquered Korea and some other stuff um, nothing too out of the ordinary uh, Japan is liberal actually and I think they have been supporting the liberal ally alliances um, so yeah anyways nothing too out of the ordinary there uh, Australia exists we'll get into that though so then the other empire that was dissolved... Oh, I think Finland was released from the, the Russians, too. Um, the other empire that really took a hard hit from that first Great War was the British Empire. At this point, they were called the British Empire, I believe, because they were fascist, so the name changed um, to reflect that. And so they were fascist, but they were having, like, riots every once in a while. They had a lot of communist rebellions. After the First Great War, they actually had... Um, they flipped back to communists at one point, and then back to fascists again, maybe, like, twice even. They just kept having rebels. Um, they've kind of settled on fascism. But, um... So after the First War, though, I was at war with them, um, and actually that prevented them from getting dissolved immediately. But after I got out of the war with them, they were dissolved immediately in the first month, the first tick after that. Uh, so Ireland was popped out, for one. Um, yeah, Ireland was popped out. Um, although I believe Northern Ireland, Ireland was owned by the British a little longer at that point, um, before that. Um, or something like that. I think Ireland might have popped out earlier, and then the rest of Ireland was given back after that point. I'm not sure, but it doesn't really matter. Just uh, know that Ireland came to exist around that time. Um, Scotland actually was not released from that. They were released... Um, Scotland was released in the, uh, I believe Scotland was released in the, uh, it, by rebels, actually. When they were sort of going through one of their government changes, when the communists rose up, then the Scottish rose up as well. And because of that, they were able to, uh, they were able to break free and push Scotland out of the Union. So England is now just the only little thing here. They're still a great power. I think largely that's just because of their industry. They just have so much population, so much industry. So then we go look in Africa and the colonial holdings. So Egypt was owned by the British. This part was actually owned by the French. Um, and Egypt was released, of course, when the British lost their empire. And so was Sudan. Um, 
I don't know how Spain came to control the Levant and the Middle East, but they did, so I'm not going to question it. Um, Portugal actually became a puppet, a dominion of France, and I'm not sure how that happened at all. I have no clue. Uh, so this area is owned by Portugal, Hejaz in, in the area, a little bit of Yemen. Um, but it's called French Al Rashid Emirate because it's a puppet of France. So I'm a little confused about that, but whatever. Um, this land was owned by the British a little after they lost their holdings here, uh, but then the Germans and the French sort of have diced them up. Um, so the Germans and the French just dominate most of Africa. There is this big chunk that's Austro-Hungarian. Uh, at some point they conquered, I guess, a little bit of uh, Tripolitania or Libya or whatever. Um, the French conquered Morocco and Algeria and Tunis. Nothing out of the ordinary there. So Austria, Austria-Hungary owns a lot of inner Africa with, and, you know, the Sahara, which is like nothing. So um, not a lot of usefulness there, but um, whatever. The Dutch own a little bit of the, like, bend of Africa, I call it. Um, Belgian Congo exists, but that's most of the time. And then uh, South Africa here, of course, was released when the British were dissolved. Um, so it is, so they were released, they still are a lot of British, obviously, but they, they sort of are historical. They have a lot of them same mix of stuff. Um, so yeah, South Africa, it's actually kind of cool how their colonies released at a fairly historic time when the British were giving more leniency and like sort of letting go of their colonial dominions, even though they were still allied and that's some, and you know, so kind of, I guess, technically puppeted nations or whatever you call it. So Germany really got a lot of benefit out of the um, bad stuff that happened to the uh, to the British and stuff. But uh, that's Africa, a little bit of border gore, but uh, it kind of makes sense. The Germans own most of it, uh, as do the the French own a good chunk. Went on. Then you get to India, and India when the British started falling on bad times, a lot of these little countries started getting popped out. Not only that, but when they finally were dissolved, it just exploded. The British got released into like 20 different states. So there's just a ton of different nations here. There's a ton. I don't think any of them... I don't think... The British, at first, they were like lost a little bit. But then when they dissolved, they lost the rest. Because for a while, they owned a little bit of land up here. Um, but they just lost everything. So they were completely dissolved. India is like... If we, if we were to continue this game, I'm sure it would get united by one of these at some point. Um, so that's kind of cool. Australia is also independent, of course. Um, you have the Ratanokasin Kingdom. You have French Asia here, Vietnam here. Nothing too out of the ordinary, honestly, uh, in East Asia. And the Philippines stolen by the Spanish, but it was a really wild game with the whole uh, Great Wars thing. The Second Great War was... I, I don't remember... Maybe it was actually in the Second Great War that the empires were dissolved. I don't remember the whole timeline. I just know that, like, at one point in one of the Great Wars, because uh, there is a third one going on right now. This third one is Austria-Hungary and Germany and Italy versus everyone else. So this one is, um, this one's interesting. I'm not sure how this one would turn out if I were to keep playing, if we could. Um, but if it did happen, oh wait, we can see who's winning. The, the Germans and the Italians won. So if it were to peace out, we can kind of imagine what would happen right now. Um, yeah, it's 98% in the favor of the Austro-Hungarians in Germany and Italy. They So like the cent, the, it's like the, centra, the central powers or the Axis powers almost, you know? Austria-Hungary, Italian Republic, Germany. Um, so even though there's different liberal constitutional monarchy and fascist, they've sort of come together. It's kind of weird. So let's see, what would happen then? So Netherlands would get dismantled. France would be dismantled. United States would be dismantled. What about... Is that it? The French would acquire... No, Italy would acquire Corsica. Okay. It makes sense, actually. They didn't have many other great powers. Just France, Netherlands, and... And, uh, US. So, so we can kind of imagine what would happen. So the, the... The Dutch would lose all their colonies. So we'd probably see... Borneo come to uh, own all this land, or you know Brunei, um, Java and Indo or Indonesia rather would own this. You know, yeah, Indonesia, Indonesia. Yeah, you just you have Indonesia pop out. You'd have uh, Brunei pop out. So they would lose their land, and the stuff in Africa would pop pop out and do a few different things. Um, with 
with uh, France, that would be interesting. I'm not sure what in the world would happen there. They don't have any cores up here, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, so France would probably, you'd probably see, you know, Tunis, um, Algeria, Tunis, Morocco, you'd see all them. You'd see a whole bunch of African nations and whatnot, Madagascar probably. Um, and I guess this is like Cambodia or Laos and Vietnam, some of each of those, yeah. Um, so they would get dissolved and stuff, which would be wild. Oh, Guyana also exists because of the whole British thing that we mentioned earlier. Um, and and both of these would become free, Suriname and French Guiana. Um, but yeah, it would just be it's just it would just be wild if we were to see what would happen. Uh, and and the the U.S. doesn't really own too much, but uh, you know they would lose like. Do they have any islands? I guess they have Hawaii. I don't know if Hawaii would be released. But in any case, that's pretty much it. This video ended up being about 25 minutes, which is kind of what I expected. Um, so yeah, you can ask me any other questions about stuff that you want to know. Um, it was pretty fun, actually. I had quite a good time. If you guys want to, I'll do more of these because I've been playing a lot of Vicky 2 in my free time. While I don't really, while I don't necessarily think I'm going to do many more series right in the near future of Vicky 2, I do feel like these sort of videos are easy for me to produce. I don't really have to do any like long-term planning it's just i play it i record it and then i upload it so if you do like it please like it you know like the video leave a comment and um whatever because it really does help to let me know if i should do more of these and i really enjoyed like talking about this it's sort of a, a good way for me to tell you guys what happened without necessarily um having to record a whole series and do a whole bunch of work so so anyways, thank you for watching. It's been a fun game. I'll probably do like some more uh, stuff like this in the future. I've been working on a game as Italy recently, so that's been pretty fun. Sardinia, Piedmont into Italy, and that one's been pretty fun, so I'll uh, probably do one of that uh, regardless. But anyway, I'm not sure if I'm going to call this an AAR, After Action Report, or just like a recap or whatnot, but I'm, I don't know if it... It's not nearly as like well thought out and planned as an AAR so I don't know want to like take the steam away from those people who do those because it's really cool that they do like a lot of work into that this is more lazy anywho thanks for watching please leave a like and subscribe for more I'm interested to know what you guys think of this and I'll see you guys in the next episode of whatever I do bye bye